Welcome to another episode of Cutting Up with Sports and Hip Hop Meet on ESPN2. We're back on the planet of Brooklyn Live at Levels Barbershop. You know, tonight, I got the boy Eddie Judge, his beast from the Tennessee Titans. From the New York Giants, we got Jesse Palmer. I got bad boy recording artist Carl Thomas. And from the New York Knicks, Tim Thomas. What's up? What's going on? We got on? the two Thomases right there. Yeah, man, that's right. I'm going I'm to I'm jump right down to Carl. Well, give me the history behind the family that's behind this, this, this Mr. Carl Thomas. You ever heard of uh, it was a, it was a very popular rock group in the 60s called the Staple Singers? Yeah. My uh, grandfather, you know what I mean, is uh, the senior brother of Pop Staples. Well, the late Pop Staples, the late great yeah. rock and roll of Hall of Fame and Duck. Yeah. Pop Staples, you know what I mean? So. For me, I always wonder where you got that soul from, so that's actually where it comes from. Like, you yeah. like the the new yeah. generation of the staple singers. At the time that I was watching them and my family was really into what they were doing, you know, I was so young that I was, you know, I, I kind of had to discover I could sing, you know, and, and the way I did that was from uh, copying people. You know, I remember a song I was singing, uh, Enjoy Yourself by the Jacksons, you know yeah. what I mean? That was just, you know what I mean? That was my number one thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Trying to sound exactly, you know, how Michael was sounding or, you know, this is the very first time I heard Luke Devangelis, you know, it's like a reference that I always have to go back to. It's like a real product of the, of the MTV revolution, you know okay. what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I was like really into groups like, like Yes and Duran Duran and stuff like that. I yeah. thought it was real cool, All right. you know what I mean? But Jesse, you're going to be the first white boy we had on this show, guys. Yeah. Change the Duran, bro. <laughs> you listen to Carl Thomas? I do. Yeah? I do. Why don't you listen? Because we cool. don't, you know, we trying to, you know, I want to see what's going on. Yeah, with you. you know, I, I, I kind of have a wider range, I right? mean, uh, you know, I like a little hip-hop, I like, uh, but I like a lot of easy listening, okay. um, a lot of that kind of stuff. When you say easy listening, what's that? Well, you know, it's, it's just, it can be like you too, it can be stuff like that, just easy stuff, nothing, you know, nothing, you know, too, too ridiculous, too crazy, but... You know, we got, uh, you know, I kind of listen to, listen to it all. You like, a, with you, music. you like a romantic, though, like, huh? I don't know about that. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what do you consider too ridiculous or too crazy, though? Know? I mean, you know, well, you, know I, you know, it's funny. We got this new strength coach right now with our team, and in the team meeting, he says, you know, I got rules for, for the workouts, and he says, I got three music rules, radio versions only. Then he said, no satanic music. And then he said, <laughs> 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 so I won't get it done now, wait. <laughs> no profanity. No. So I mean, I guess being ridiculous, you know, I don't, I don't listen to Satan music. Uh, besides that, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of all around the spectrum. Besides that, all right, Mr. Uh, I don't know what to call you. Just like a little beast out there. Man. <laughs> Are you coming back to the Titans? Uh, uh oh. That's the uh -oh. same thing I'm in action. Uh oh. <laughs> Um, it's been it's been a long process. It's just a, uh, a very interesting situation I'm in right now. It's it's the business side. All right, now before I'm, I'm gonna cut you off, let me let me explain to everybody what's going on in this show. We in the barber shop. This is the barber shop. This way you let it all out and you don't hold it back. So you know, all the barbers with this, somebody get knocked out, they come in and they cut it out here. When somebody fumbled on the football field, this way they tell it like it is. If Tim Thomas misses dunk. This is where you gonna hear where it's going down. So, I'm gonna get back into my interview. I just had to let y'all know that. Now, I'm gonna ask you this question again, and you gotta tell me the barbershop answer. The barbershop answer. Are you going back with the Titans? I know it's about the paper, they gotta give you your money, everything. I'm talking to you like I'm... As, as, of, as of today, yeah. Okay, you going of, back. As of, as of that means you about to get paid. <laughs> that means you about to get that paper. Exactly. As of today. As of today. As of right now, there's no more. Yeah, I'm a Tennessee Titan. All right. All right, see, that's what I'm talking about. All right, now I'm going to jump to you. Everybody got a little something dirt going on. We're going uh, straight to the barbershop yeah, yeah, yeah. You said something about Kenya Martin. Did you call him Fugazi? That's right. That's right. Yeah. You said he just, he he, he a fake gangster, like, kind of like. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. From my eyes, that's, the step, you know, what I see. Okay. I'm doing a basketball court. All right. And, you know, I mean, it's a lot of guys in the league that certain guys wouldn't mess with. And it's certain guys that guys will mess with. Okay. And in my eyes, I see him mess with people he chooses to mess with. But enough of that. I mean, I mean, you know, you just. 
my barbershop questions. I just want to know the stuff that... The man is from Gazy, bottom line. Oh, see? Bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I was going to ask, like, who, who is the guy in the NBA that absolutely nobody would, would try? Right now? Yeah. I would say the Diesel. I mean, I don't think nobody would, nah, you know, try to step up to the Diesel. But there's a lot of guys Charles like Barkley is punch Chad. But there's a lot of acting that's going on in the league, too. Like, you know, ain't nobody really trying to be out there like we all tough. But at the same time, you got to hold your own, so. And how you feel being a Nick now? It's the best thing ever, man. Yeah. Being from Jersey and, you know, getting that car, saying I was coming back home. It's the best thing ever. Link Everybody that goes, all the players out here saying that they become a Nick, they say it's the best thing ever. That's what y'all always dream to be. Well, people that's not from there, I mean, they don't understand. No, but I'm saying, yeah, if you from around this if area. If you from this area, I mean, that's where you want to be. Yeah, you know, playing right. in the garden, you know, each and every night. Definitely. What's one of your greatest memories of this garden? The first time I stepped on the floor. Oh. And that was in high school. Okay. It was a blizzard here in the city. Mm -hmm. And the Knicks were supposed to play, I think, 8.30, and we had a game at 5.30. And the blizzard, snow coming down. We played the game. They canceled the next game. We get stuck in the garden. It's my mm -hmm. first time in the garden. That's so it was meant to be then. That's a good wow. blizzard. Wow. And now I'm back, so. Yeah, now wow. you're back. I hope I'm stuck here forever. I just found out that Eddie Judge is getting married. He's about a week, a week away. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Where's your big day? Hey. Where's your big day? Where's your big day? Where's your big day? Where's your big day? It's the barbershop, right? It's the barbershop, right? Oh, yeah. We can ask you. It's the barbershop. I don't have no date. I don't have no date. When I was a bachelor, they didn't do that to me. They didn't get me on the show like that. It's interesting. And they've asked me since who else in the NFL. And if I could pick a player, should have been the bachelor. And you know what? You know, I've said uh, there's been two names I've thrown at her. One was Dahani Jones, a linebacker from Philly. But the other one was Eddie George. But little did I know that this guy's a bachelor for a week. So oh. all those girls that had their opportunity. I, I, I envy this man. No, he doesn't, dude. Listen, if you watch the show, he had a choice of what? What are how many? Twenty-five. There weren't that many. If I if I could tell you, if I could tell you how many how many teammates and friends I have whose sisters want to get with Eddie. Now I can make phone. We can make phone calls oh, on the show. No, no. Can you say that that actually turned you into a star? It was just a great opportunity, um, and it was something done in an industry that I'm so unfamiliar with. You know, I've never really been to LA anyway, and uh, being out there, living there for two and a half months, filming the show was kind of neat. Having a chance to kind of see. Uh, have they offered you any uh, movie deals or any seven? Shows? Seven? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It was fun, you know, it happened in the off season. I, you know, it was great. Um, you know, I had a lot of fun sharing with, with my family, friends, of course, the guys in the locker room, you know, and it was over and now we're back to football and it's it's you know a giant football. All right, we're gonna come right back in a minute. You know, when we get back, we're gonna get deep, deep, deep into everybody's business, you know what I'm saying? We just touched the top level. You know what I'm saying? Let's go back. Come on. Cutting up, brought to you by Blockbuster. Make it a blockbuster night.